The 1970s was a period of global economic recession amidst political instability in the Middle East. Following the collapse of Bretton Woods in 1971, the United States currency was left to freely float, eventually leading to record high inflation rates among Western countries and driving down the price of oil. Meanwhile, the 1973 Yom Kippur War pitted Arab nations against Israel and the West, ultimately leading to the organization of the petroleum exporting countries, commonly known as OPEC, to impose an oil embargo on nations supporting Israel. The 1973 OPEC oil embargo was an important political and economic triumph and tragedy in history because it triumphantly allowed OPEC nations to assert their relevance in the global economy and pressure Israel to withdraw from its occupied territories while also tragically spiraling the global economy into a long period of stagflation and economic instability. OPEC was established during the Baghdad Conference in September 1960 by five initial member states, Kuwait, Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, and Venezuela. Over the years, this intergovernmental organization expanded to include 15 countries with the goal of unifying petroleum policies, securing fair and stable prices for producers, and ensuring a fair return on capital. Throughout the 1960s, OPEC was successful in preventing cuts in oil prices, and by 1968, the organization officially declared principles asserting their right to control global oil production and prices. The first economic tragedy for OPEC came after the collapse of Bretton Woods in 1971. Established in July 1944, along with international monetary agencies like the IMF and the World Bank, Bretton Woods was a monetary system that provided for fixed exchange rates to the US dollar, setting a fixed price of gold at $35 per ounce. Thus, once the US withdrew from Bretton Woods on August 15, 1971, the dollar was left to freely float, driving up the price of gold from $90.50 in 1973 to $455 by the end of the decade. The subsequently high inflation rates during the 1970s negatively affected OPEC countries. As the changing economic climate stirred global unrest, Middle Eastern politics were also turbulent. The 1967 Six-Day War between Israel and Egypt resulted in an embarrassing defeat for the Arabs as the Israelis took control of the Golan Heights, the West Bank, and Sinai. Arab backlash was exemplified in the first Arab oil embargo of 1967, yet it was brief and not as impactful as the oil embargo during the 1973 Yom Kippur War. Seeking revenge for their loss in 1967, Egypt and Syria launched a surprise attack on Israel on the Jewish Yom Kippur holiday on October 6, 1973. Around 600 Egyptian soldiers assaulted the Bar Lev Israeli defense installation line, while further north, the Syrian task force overran the ceasefire line on the Golan Heights. Egyptian General Abdel Ghani Gamasi recalls everyone cheering once the Egyptian brigade crossed into Sinai. The international community was also involved in this conflict. The U.S. aided Israel, while the Soviets threatened to intervene on the Arab side. The Americans eventually called for a ceasefire and implemented UN Resolution 242, which called for peace and the withdrawal of Israeli forces from Arab territories. While this conflict returned to the Arabs, their pre-1967 territories, it led to tens of thousands of casualties. The oil-rich Arab states pressured the U.S. to abandon its support of Israel during the Yom Kippur War. Nevertheless, on October 19, 1973, President Nixon requested Congress to aid Israel with $2.2 billion. This infuriated Arab nations, who finally announced an oil embargo that resulted in oil production cuts and the incremental increase of oil prices. The oil-producing countries of the Arab world decided to use their oil as a political weapon they will reduce oil production by 5% a month until the Israelis withdraw from occupied territories. If the Arab countries keep that pledge, it would reduce their production by almost 50% in one year. By December 1973, OPEC had announced the new price of oil to be $11.65 a barrel, a 388% increase from the initial price prior to the war. On March 18, 1974, the OPEC oil embargo ended after the U.S. agreed to promote a ceasefire between Syria and Israel. OPEC ultimately used oil as a weapon to force Israel to withdraw from the territories it occupied following the Six-Day War. The 1973 OPEC oil embargo was an economic triumph for the Arab world. OPEC countries asserted their relevance in the global economy and successfully pressured Israel to withdraw from occupied Arab territories. This is evidenced by the fact that OPEC's control of oil more than doubled 
increasing from 25% in 1972 to 51% in 1982. Furthermore, the Seven Sisters Western Oil Corporation, which included Esso, Gulf, Mobil, SoCal, Texaco, Royal Dutch Shell, and British Petroleum, had less leverage in the oil trade. In the same time frame that OPEC's control of oil more than doubled, the Western company's equity interest in oil, leaving the Middle East, decreased from 92% to a shocking 7%. OPEC essentially raised the price of oil in order to stay even with the dramatic inflation of the US dollar. From OPEC's point of view, the end of Bretton Woods led to dramatic fluctuations in the price of oil rather than being stable in terms of gold. Since the price of oil was fixed with the US dollar, rapid inflation during the early 1970s quickly devalued the price of oil, naturally propelling OPEC countries to raise the dollar price of their barrel. However, this is not to discount the reality that OPEC nations profited tremendously from the oil embargo. Revenues for the five founding members of OPEC increased from $2.25 billion in 1960 to $80 billion in 1974. While the OPEC oil embargo was a triumph for Arab nations, it was also an economic tragedy for the US and other Western countries, resulting in low economic growth and stagflation, a period of high inflation and high unemployment rates. Americans lost half a million jobs and the US gross national product decreased by 10 to 20 billion dollars. The sharp increase in oil prices from $2 a barrel in 1971 to $35 a barrel in 1981 caused a global recession in 1974 and 1975. And as oil exports from OPEC decreased, U.S. domestic oil production also decreased, hitting the national economy hard. The U.S. was ultimately deprived of 2 million barrels a day, suffering from the consequences of relying too heavily on the import of oil. The OPEC oil embargo was also a tragedy for American consumers paying more for electricity every month, and the gasoline is going up. During the oil crisis, oil was rationed, gasoline prices were restricted, driving on Sundays was banned in an effort to save fuel, and the highway speed limit was reduced to 55 miles per hour. As a result, public awareness of the climate increased, and an emphasis was placed on using alternative fuels. I think it's going to end with everybody changing their, their habits. While the OPEC oil embargo negatively affected the U.S. economy and American consumers, its positive environmental consequences were a long-term triumph. Policies aimed at domestic energy conservation helped transition the U.S. away from heavily relying on oil. On November 7, 1973, President Nixon announced Project Independence to achieve energy self-sufficiency and domestic energy independence by 1980. Furthermore, Secretary of State Henry Kissinger helped establish the International Energy Agency, known as IEA, in 1974 in an effort to reduce Western dependence on OPEC oil exports. The Ford administration followed Nixon's footsteps in creating fuel economy standards and passing the Energy Policy and Conservation Act in 1975, which established the Strategic Petroleum Reserve as an emergency storage of crude oil. Aside from all the economic and environmental consequences of the OPEC oil embargo, its political effects could also be viewed as both a triumph and tragedy. Arab countries did not achieve their desired outcome of complete Israeli withdrawal from occupied land beyond the 1949 armistice line in Palestine. However, European countries and Japan expressed their concern over illegal Israeli settlements. Kissinger's shuttle diplomacy following the embargo could also be viewed as a political triumph since his peace initiative produced multiple disengagement agreements in the Middle East. In the end, the OPEC oil embargo can be viewed as both a triumph and tragedy depending on the perspective taken and the political or economic context. The 1973 OPEC oil embargo, followed by another global oil shock during the 1979 Iranian Revolution, prompted President Carter to sign the Energy Security Act in 1980, which encouraged the use of geothermal, solar, and biomass energy as alternatives to oil. The U.S. Synthetic Fuels Corporation was also established to produce 2 million barrels of liquid fuel a day from non-petroleum sources. These policies aimed at alternative energy resources have significant implications in the current economy since they increased autonomous oil production in Western nations and reduced Western dependence on OPEC. As seen with the current political climate in the Middle East and the global economy, the 1973 OPEC oil embargo was a significant political and economic triumph and tragedy in history.